Okay, right, this call is now live and recording. Uh, so thank you very much to everyone who's come. My name is Yo Yehudi. I am one of the Open Life Science team. This is a joint Open Life Science and Innovation Leaders team uh, webinar call. We are looking to just share a bit about the two programs that we are running, uh, since we actually occupy similar domains and also give a chance for people to ask questions about the program uh, and get an idea maybe which one you might want to apply for or perhaps which one you are mentoring or being an expert for. So the first thing I would like to mention is that we have code of conduct, both open life, open life science and innovation leaders have a code of conduct. So on the second page, we have a link to the open life science code of conduct, which applies to this call. Um, and if at any, re at any time you have any reason to believe that uh, someone hasn't treated you fairly or kindly, um, please take a look at the Open Life Science uh, Code of Conduct. And there is information on how to report any problems if you need to. And someone fantastic has just highlighted the Code of Conduct link there on the screen. Um, so thanks to everyone who's come. If you've come along, please do hop over to the roll call in the agenda and add your name uh, just so that we can get an idea of who's been attending. We're really happy to have you all here. Um, and I will uh, make a start. Oh, just a couple of notes about etiquette. Please try and keep your uh, microphone muted unless you're speaking. Uh, this just helps to block out background noise so that uh, everyone can hear you okay. Uh, we can hear the speaker okay, rather. So we are going to start this call with um, presenting a short introduction on each of the programs that we are running. And after that, we'll talk a bit about the differences between the two programs. And then finally, after that, we will have questions and answers. But while people are talking, feel free to scroll down to the bottom of the document. And there is a section on q and I've just highlighted that. It's, I think, on the third page at the moment. And you can type those as we're going. You can add your name to the question, but it is not mandatory. Um, and then we will try and answer those once we've done with our presentations. Uh, so I think I will move on to the presentations. And Emmy, are you ready? Yes, thank you very much, Yo, for um, introducing the call and setting the scene. Uh, my name is Emmy. Um, I'm the Innovation Community Manager at eLife. And uh, while I will try to share my screen, I'll talk a bit about um, sort of the history of this program, let's say. I think you can see it on my screen now. Um, so yeah, so um, we basically at eLife, uh, for those of you who don't know eLife, we are a nonprofit organization with the mission to promote and encourage responsible behaviors in research. And the way we do that is by operating a platform that facilitates this and encourages these behaviors. Um, and so many of you may know us for publishing a journal um, but actually, we do a lot more work beyond uh, this fantastic journal. Um, under the innovation, the eLife Innovation Initiative, we support a community of open source um, developers and uh, anyone, basically, uh, and op open innovators to build uh, tools that will hopefully change the ways that we consume, discover, share, and evaluate research. Um, so this program, uh, this is where this program came from. Um, we have been, in the past, we've been running things like hackathons, so the eLife Innovation Sprint, where we see that there's a lot of uh, nice ideas as to how we can actually improve research communication and open science. But the problem we also see is that while these ideas are fantastic, they don't usually get worked on or sustained beyond the event itself. And so um, the idea of this program is to sustain and maximize the impact of events like these and ideas like these to actually turn these prototypes into um, actual products that could um, be used by a wider community um, and will be maintained and sustained hopefully for a longer period of time. Um, and on the way, of course, is to empower a new generation of open innovators who will then you know, have the confidence and skills to lead these projects um, on their own and with the community. Uh, so eLife Innovation Leaders is based on the Mozilla Open Leaders model, so is uh, similar to uh, Open Life Science. Um, 
it will take place from February next year uh, all the way to June. It is 14 weeks, uh, maybe with a couple of breaks in the middle. Um, the, so to join the program, you would have to have your own idea of a tool platform or community project that would uh, drive forward open science or uh, change research communication. Um, and we would evaluate the application and if you're accepted, you would then be, I think you would receive an email probably around Christmas time, actually, unfortunately. But yes, we promise to allow enough time for you to answer. Um, but yes, so, so if you do agree to be on the program, you will be joining a cohort of, we are estimating around 25 to 30 different project groups. Um, and yes, you will embark on this very exciting journey from February next year. So what actually happens? Um, every week you will have a call, a cohort call with the rest of the cohort. During these calls, you will go through a curriculum that covers topics from uh, open science, open leadership, um, to design thinking, to marketing, promotion, and towards the sort of later part of the course, more on sustainability and community building. Um, and you would learn these skills by discussing on the calls with your cohort members, as well as hearing from guest speakers who have some ex more experience in these uh, particular areas. And every other week of the program, you will meet with your assigned mentor. So this person is a person who has been an open leader in the past, has launched or run their own project. And their, their role there is to support you through this journey, um, to make sure that you are progressing through the curriculum okay, and to put you in touch with experts who will be able to help you out if you have any um, more specific questions regarding uh, particular parts of the curriculum. Um, so I'm mentioning a lot of things like mentors and experts, who they are actually. Um, we've literally just today um, published a, an initial list of mentors and experts, and you can see that list on our website um, that I think is at the bottom of the screen right now. Um, but I can give you a sneak peek. So here's the website if you go. Um, there's the mentor section, which is right here. And I'm personally i can't be more happy with the with the panel that we've gathered and the people who've, who've agreed to volunteer their time and expertise and so this is like i think one of the major advantages of joining this program is to get to know these people and to learn with them and from them um yeah so hopefully by the end of the 14 weeks you would be empowered to lead your own project um and be enthusiastic even more about open science and changing research communication. So as I said, application is open right now. Um, you can find out more and apply on that website at the bottom of the slide. Um, I'd also say that um, if, you, if there are any specific requirements that will enable your participation, please don't hesitate to let me know by getting in touch. Um, I promise to respond to you um, before the application close, hopefully. Um, and if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask later, of course. Um, and yeah, I, I think my email will come up. It's up somewhere on the agenda. So please do contact me if you have any questions. Um, so now I think uh, Berenice is introducing the Open Life Science Program. So I'll pass the screen back to her. Thank you, Amy. I will try to share it. So. Can you see it? Yeah, great. Um, thanks, uh, thanks for Amy for presenting the um, the life uh, program. So now I will talk a bit so about the open life science program. So I'm Berenice Batu. I'm currently a postdoc in Freiburg in Germany. And with you and Malvika, we started the project about open life science. 
Um, so why do we care about open science? So because we think so open science is really important. We need to, it's, it's a moral obligation for us as scientists to, to share to our project what we are working on for quality of the research, for economic benefits, um, so for global benefits also and to I mean, we are mostly regarding paid by public money, and so it will be, it's important to share our, our um, um, science with public also, and to help innovation and efficiency of research. But <clears throat> doing open science is not always easy. I mean, we, we know the concept, the idea, but how to do it, how to make sure that we do open science and that we promote open science uh, for in our project, but also to our colleagues, to make sure that the old science become more and more opening, it's not easy. So most of the of, of us learn about open science by reading a lot, by doing it, trying, failing, and things. But there are no greatly good way of learning how to do and how to become a good open scientist. And so with that in mind, um, we started to think, how can we um, make this path easier? So we, we, with you and Malvika, we started to think we need to create so, a sort of monitoring and training programs for helping people to become open science ambassadors with a focus on life science, but I mean, it could be applied to anything. And the idea of this program is, um, is a 14 weeks program where people get a, mon a mentoring one-to-one, -one, so one project to one mentors, where they develop their project during this time. And in parallel, they will have also co training calls on open science on several topics that I will discuss, I will show you later, um, to help them learning from experts, because during this different court calls, several experts will uh, um, discuss about different aspects of the open science. But you will have also the opportunity to discuss among other peoples about these different aspects of open science. And so to, in a similar way that Amy is um, mentioned, so the schedule of the program is you have every week, you have a call once, every, one, one week with your mentor, and one week with the court. And we will um, go through different aspects of open science. So how to share your project, how to spread the word about your, your project, how to develop your project in an open way, using GitHub or any other uh, platform, open platforms, how, to, um, how to, to think about from the start uh, being open. It's, uh, I forgot to mention that. Um, what is open source, what is open data, open software, um, how you can make that uh, better in your daily life, um, what is the open uh, dissemination, so how to, you can um, disseminate your work in an open way, so the discussion of open access, preprint, but also open educations and trainings are also important uh, aspects that we would like to, to address during this uh, program. And also how to develop your program in a way that people feel included in your programs, in your project. Um, empowering uh, for, so designing and operating for inclusivity. Um, and how to give feedbacks. So giving feedbacks for, for your, to your colleagues, but giving feedbacks to a global community. So it's all these aspects that we would like to address during this, uh, these 14 weeks. And in the same time, so you will have, um, you will have um, as, in a similar way as Amy descri described, you will have uh, every time, um, uh, every two weeks, uh, calls with your mentors where you could review your project, how your project is going, and how do you develop it in, in, the, in the open way somehow. Um, and for that, so you will have uh, help of um, 18 mentors. So the, the, the pictures here are not up to date, sorry. Um, but we have currently uh, 18 mentors that will be happy to help you in this, in this, in this process. 
Um, and there will be also more than 20 to 20 experts that will be there to give um, talks during the court course, but also could attend one of the of your um, course with your mentors to address one aspect, a specific aspect of your project. It could be how to write uh, to which journals apply, uh, submitting a um, paper, it can be another aspect, but these experts are there for that. They will be, uh, you will be able to reach them. Um, so if you want to join the program, we will be super happy to have you. And the applications open, uh, are open since one, almost one month. Uh, okay, more than one month now. Uh, and so the clothing, the application will close on the 18th of December. And if you want to apply, so you need to, you apply with a project in mind. So it can be just an ID. It can be something you are already working on. It can be something, any ID, any project, anything that will promote open science. Um, and I mean, you, we can have, we have several ideas of projects. So it can be technical, it can be just an open data, how to release your data or project or report. It can be related to a protocols. If you have a protocols, it can be an open source project, uh, writing open publications, or facilitating a community development, a development of a community around one project. It can be also related to education or on life science or something. If you have any doubt on your, of if your project will fit in that, uh, feel free to reach us. Uh, feel free to ask your question now during the webinar. Um, and you can also always uh, reach uh, check on our website, so openlifec.org. You can contact us, so Maldika, uh, you or me, uh, directly by, via the email that you can find on the website, or you can also reach us via Twitter. And I'm happy to, to answer any questions, and I would like to thank also my my co-organizer organizer Malvika and you for helping us developing this amazing program hopefully thanks a lot amazing thank you so much Berenice uh, so if anyone has questions feel free to type them already at the um, down the document I th it's migrated it's nearly at the last page of the document um, before we go to questions I think Emmy was just going to do a short section on um, what the differences between these two programs are because I'm sure some of you may have noticed that, that we do overlap a lot but there are some differences we do have slightly different target audiences so Emmy over to you yeah so um, I think yeah the stem from you know some people uh, slightly confused about the differences between the two programs, considering that uh, open life science is um, focused on life sciences, uh, openness in the life sciences, and eLife is a life science. Um, it's the work of eLife is also very much focused on life sciences. So uh, I thought I, it would be helpful to do some sort of disambiguation here. Um, I think you can see that table that Yo has very kindly proved that put up in the agenda. Um, so that basically summarizes sort of the more conceptual and um, curriculum differences between the two program. So um, the similar things that we both do, uh, we, topics that we both cover include things like open leadership. So thinking about um, uh, open communication, higher level conveying of what you're trying to do with your project, thinking about purpose, about mission and vision. Um, that's, that sort of topic I think is, is important for all types of open science and open projects in general. And so it makes sense that we both cover it. The other thing is opening your project to contributions from a larger community. So that uh, GitHub is one of the tools that we love using, but it's not the only one, but we would both, both programs would cover a component that um, describes and will give you the skill to, uh, yeah, put your project open develop your project openly online um, and then we move on to the differences so as far as i understand please correct me if i'm wrong um, the open life science program would cover topics that berenice mentioned already uh, talking about sort of general the open science um, movement and the various initiatives that are going on so things like citations dois unique identifiers um, preprints etc with the life science focus 
open access, open education, open hardware and open software. Um, yeah, so, so, th so these are the topics that they would uh, spend some time on. Um, also, you, you can see towards sort of the seventh row of the table, career paths in, in academia. So um, yeah, this would, this would be something that is unique to the Open Life Science program that you would understand more about the various career paths within academia and how open science can help um, motivate and facilitate that. Um, in terms of innovation leaders, our focus uh, and the, pro the scopes of our projects are much more uh, focused on, on tools and platforms. Uh, we really want to help innovators develop a tool that will get eventually get used and also, you know, in a very practical sense, get funded. Um, so um, we would cover the topics for open leadership and open contribution, as I described already. But in addition, we are thinking to cover more things, uh, have, have definitely have a focus on sort of product design and design thinking. So thinking about your target users and uh, the different types of users. Um, we would also touch on uh, promotion and communication and developing with the community. Um, and finally, we would definitely think very heavily, we would definitely discuss quite heavily um, sustainability of a project, different modes of financial sustainability, um, with an open source project in particular, how do you come up with a viable financial model, this sort of things. So uh, in terms of format, there's slight differences. Um, timing wise, Open Life Science begins in January, Innovation Leaders begins in February. Um, the, as Baron has mentioned, um, the Open Life Science program has a format that alternates between the cohort call and the mentor, mentorship call. Uh, the Innovation Leaders Program, on the other hand, have a cohort call every single week and the mentorship call every other week in addition to that cohort call. So our, our, um, the Innovation Leaders curriculum is a bit more sort of tightly packed, let's say, um, just format wise. But the, calls are also, the cohort calls are also a bit shorter. They're supposed to be an hour long, whereas the Open Life Science one is 90 minutes. So um, that may be something that you want to consider or not, but these are the sort of differences. Uh, the websites are listed um, at the second last row of the table and the application deadlines are exactly the same. Um, so we encourage you to look at both programs um, to understand sort of where your project fits better. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us. Um, and yeah, um, I think that's more or less, I've more or less covered most things, I hope. Um, if any, if the other organizers have anything to add, please feel free to do so. Thank you, Emmy. that was amazing. Um, Alvika or Berenice, did you have anything you wanted to add? Nope. Okie dokie. <laughs> right, uh, so let's move on to the Q&A then. Uh, so I will read out what we have um, once we've gotten through those. If, I mean, also, if anyone wants to verbalize, uh, also, please feel free to ask questions um, out loud. That's fine as well. Uh, but I'll read through the first one. So we have a question uh, that came in from the chat. For the Open Life Science program, do you envision researchers and also admin staff to apply? Um, so the answer is yes. Uh, researchers, admin staff, or if you fall into any other bucket, then you're quite welcome to apply as well. As uh, basically people who are interested in a career in academia, um, but we don't want to judge about what your job title may be. <laughs> um, so anyone at all really is welcome to apply. Um, next question for the Open Life Science Program: Could you please provide some projects which are realistic to aim within the duration of the program? Uh, so I think Movika maybe is typing out some fantastic answers there at the moment. Um, but I'll just add my two cents or two pence, actually, I should say, since I'm in the UK, right? Um, <laughs> but basically, I would th think you've got, um, we've got about three and a half months for open life science, or I think slightly, slightly shorter for uh, innovation leaders. Um, and at the end of the day, Something that you think is realistic that um, you can do either if this is a project that you're doing with your work, then you can probably dedicate a bit more time to it. Or if it's a project that you're doing in your spare time, then you probably want the scope to be a bit smaller. 
Um, but it literally, basically, I think we think so long as it applies to science um, and you want to lead it openly, then just about anything is fine. Um, and one recommendation I would have is actually Google Mozilla Open Leaders and have a look at some of the projects from um, Open Leaders 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, there's various different rounds uh, that previously have happened and there's a lot of open science projects in there. And Berenice, I think there's something you wanted to say? Yeah, uh, so we listed in the in the Open Life Science website, in the stories, all the projects that may be interesting for life science from the previous Mozilla Open Leaders. So you can have a look there and there is a blog post on that. It can give you a lot of ideas of potential uh, projects that may be interesting for you or to give you an idea. Cool. Is that link? Oh, yeah, that link is actually in the notes. So you can visit that yourselves if you want to actually have a look through some of those projects. Um, and I think, uh, Denise, we had a question. Hi, yes, uh, it's Denise here. Uh, hi, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Very, very interesting. So I might be interested in the innovation leader program. What I wanted to understand better uh, is in terms of um, using open code, uh, open source code that is provided. Well, that is the I would develop in as a part of the program. Is it expected to uh, from from the from the organizers to to have this code uh, uh, completely open from the very beginning uh, on GitHub or other platforms, or uh, yeah, or there is an extent of uh, uh, secrecy. I mean, probably a, a, a good example could be like Google. So there is a lot of uh, code uh, developed by Google that is open for to everyone, but not all code uh, developed by Google is open. So I wanted to understand this also uh, with respect to developing a product that is um, sustainable uh, from the economical point of view in the future. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Dennis. Um, I think that's a very good question. Uh, we, do, we do really encourage all code base to be open because we believe that this, this is the way on top of which innovation, other innovations can be built in, this, in the spirit of openness. Uh, we understand that it's very hard to get your head around how you can actually sort of, you know, sustain financially from this, right? Because literally anyone can take that code and, and do whatever they want with it. But we have seen success in the past, and this is something that we definitely would cover in, in, the, in the course, in the program, is how to actually um, still, you know, um, be financially sustainable while your code base is entirely open. So models like, you know, having service like offering a service license agreement, service level agreement, or having some sort of a membership scheme, etc. These are like models that people have explored in the past, and we are going to sort of discuss this as well um, as part of the program um, to learn together kind of how we can better approach financial sustainability in open source but yeah to to cut to go back to your question um yes we do think that the the code base needs to be entirely open and preferably be, preferably from the beginning okay looking back in the question doc um feel free still to add questions if you have any questions or if anyone wants to um you can use your the raise hand function in zoom or you can just unmute if you have any questions right now i'll leave it quiet for a moment yo there is a question on the notes if you oh. see right above I do see it, yes. Okay, I have an idea around a certain topic, facilitating a community, but with several pos possible measurable outcomes. Is it possible to mention all of them in the application and then with the mentor choose the most realistic and focus on it? Um, so I can answer that from the open life science perspective. Um, and I, my thoughts are that it's, that sounds reasonable to talk through with your mentor about what is feasible and reasonable. Um, but at the same time, also think about when people are reviewing your application, if it looks like you plan to actually conquer the world in three months, 
then that might be a bit too much. Uh, so make, maybe state it in much the way that you have now. Say I have idea A and B and C, and these are the things I'd like to look into and hopefully I can prioritize that. And don't just say, I'm gonna do all these things in the three months, because one thing that we probably will look at is how feasible and realistic it looks like your uh, plans are. I don't know, Emmy, do you have anything to add from your side? Um, yeah, thanks, Yo. I, I think uh, our perspectives are similar. Um, I know that everyone is very ambitious and we all want to do everything. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think one of the things that you would learn from the program is, you know, you need to focus um, for, your, for your audience as well, not only for yourself. And so it's something that we would go through in the program, um, maybe not in a lot of depth, but you will, if you have, if this is your concern, we can definitely try and address that. Um, either through mentorship or through the curriculum itself. So um, have a think. Um, also think about sort of how, how it would affect your application and the, the sort of um, um, acceptance, uh, how it would sort of put, put yourself in, put you in a better position in terms of the applications. Um, yeah, but we are generally open to all exciting ideas and so just give us your best shot. Awesome. Okay, I can see a couple of cursors hovering over bullet points in the questions. So feel free to add any. Um, if, if you don't have any questions or if you're still thinking about your question, um, we actually have a couple of sets of bullet points further down the document because uh, we'd really welcome some feedback on what you've all heard today. So further down, we have things to encourage. So if there's something that you really like from what you heard, then please do share. Um, we know to focus on that or to emphasize it if uh, needed. And we also have things to improve. So if you think maybe, maybe that could be better or maybe we should change something. And again, this is for either of the programs and feel free to add those. You can type those anonymously or you can add your name and our feelings won't be hurt uh, so long as we're taking a goal for a constructive criticism. And I will, just uh, put my microphone on mute for a moment or two and just see if any more questions pop up. Excellent. I see a couple more questions have uh, popped in. So one question, will you be seeking participants organizational buy-in? So again, I'll answer from Open Life Science. Um, I think if you have organizational buy-in, that's amazing. Um, if it's a self-led project, you probably don't need organizational buy-in unless uh, you are um, using work time to do it. Uh, but what I would say is that if you are working on something and you're, you don't have any power to implement any of the changes, then that might not be the best project to propose. So if it's a project um, that you know you can, uh, let's say, implement a code of conduct or um, respond to some of the exercises and ideas that you'll be learning, then it should be fantastic. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add from your, from your own side, Emmy? Thanks. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, yeah, a, a very similar answer. Um, as long as we want to make sure that you have the resources and uh, capacities to be able to lead and organize the, the uh, project. But where that comes from, um, it's up to you as long as you can demonstrate to us that you know you will have the time and you will have the, the, the capacities, um, we would be happy to take the project from there. The other thing that I want to mention in particular for innovation leaders is that we do have a CLA, so uh, a contributors 
uh, I forgot the full name, but it basically means that even if you don't, if your company doesn't allow you to work on open source um, um, projects, we have an exclusion that will allow you to do so. So you don't have to worry about the fact that your the product from your project will be locked in with your company. Um, if that's if that's a case that applies for you. Thanks. So I see another fantastic uh, question saying, can I choose my mentor from your list? Um, and I'm not sure how to answer that one. I don't know if anyone else wants to step in here. Mavika, Berenice, any thoughts? I think it's all right to mention it in the application. It will actually make our selection process much more smoother. So I would totally encourage that. Awesome. That's from Open Life Science. Thank you. Emmy, do you have a... Um, yeah, so we 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 typically, uh, we want to give mentors the, the opportunity to pick. So uh, <laughs> you can, uh, I agree, like you can mention it in your application if there's someone that you'd really like to have as a mentor. Um, and I think that it will, it will probably also mean that the mentors will have, it will have a high preference for your project as well. Um, so yeah, we hope that this is a very mutual speed day, speed matching, speed matching, matchmaking <laughs> type of process. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, please feel free to let us know who you want to uh, be mentored by. Um, I can't promise anything, but we'll try our best. Thank you. Okay, right. Um, are the questions winding down or does anyone else have any other questions? Did I miss any hands up that I didn't see in chat or anything? There's nothing like leaving awkward silences to see if people say things. <laughs> um, okay, I think I'm going to assume that we've asked all the questions we want to ask. What I will- Can I add, add a question? Go ahead. Um, can people still join the mentor and expert list or is it fixed? Um, I think <laughs> this is weird because like um, I'm actually answering someone in my own group here, but <laughs> I think from Open, Le Open Life Science that we're probably still happy to accept mentors um, or ex experts if anyone's interested. Um, so just ping hello at openlifesci.org and the, our email is in the agenda up at the top for the code of conduct reporting as well. So you can find us there. And Emmy, what's your side? Yes. It's the short answer. We're still accepting. <laughs> as, um, yeah, we, we'd love to, especially mentors, we'd love to have more mentors as well on board. Um, we, um, please do drop us an email at um, innovation at elabsciences.org. Um, if you have anyone to recommend as well, this is another possibility. So um, if you know someone who's really, really good at something and you really want them on the program, um, please do let me know and I'm happy to get in touch with them as well. Um, yeah, it will not, we, we'd like to like, uh, um, naturally I want to have a chat with you before, you know, we commit to anything together, but, um, yeah, we'd love to have more people on board. Thank you. Ah, and we have another question that's hopped in. So um, I may have missed this. How many participants will you accept? And is there any limit on the number of, sorry, uh, participants per project? Okay, I think this might vary um, between the programs. So I don't know if we have a number specifically for participants that will accept for Open Life Science. Uh, we don't want it to make, too massive that it's going to be hard for us to run um but we have 18 mentors who will probably be, be taking between one to two mentees each per person um but it will depend basically on the number of 
applicants we get versus how much mentors can take. Um, and in terms of the limit on the number of participants per project, I don't think there is a limit. I don't know that having 18 people on the same project would actually be productive, but two, three, four probably is reasonable from the open life science point of view. Um, one thing that I will note, uh, certainly from the open life science point of view, as we've been developing this curriculum, having three people on the team has made it so much easier because uh, you always know that there's someone who can make a meeting or who, who won't have a deadline that's coming up. Um, so there's a bit more free time when you work in a team. Uh, but you may also meet people on the program that have um, that you can work with and that you may want to collaborate with, which is uh, pretty exciting. And Emmy for the innovation leaders? Yeah, I'd say um, it's at the moment I'm, I'm saying 25 to 30. Uh, that's taking into account that we currently have 15 confirmed mentors. We're negotiating a couple more. Um, each of them will take one to two groups. And so, yeah, that it basically comes down to this. So if we do manage to get more mentors, we may be able to accept a few more um, closer to the 30 side. Whereas if we, yeah, you know, if, if um, mentors are busy, then we'd have to start with a smaller cohort. Um, but yeah, I, I also feel that we, um, we want to have, I think the people and the people within the program is crucial to the program itself. It basically is what makes the program. And so we want to be um, as, uh, inclusive, but we also want to be, um, um, yeah, careful with sort of, um, you know, who we accept and how well the group will, the group dynamics and how well the group will work together. So that's, that's my answer on this question. All right, we've had another question. Since there's a big overlap in the scope of the programs, is it okay to apply to both? And will you be discussing between the two programs which applications are more relevant? Uh, so for, for your sake, as much as anything, we recommend choosing just one program so you don't actually have to write two applications. Um, but it's fine to apply to both if you wish. Um, I think there is potentially scope that we might, um, if we see a program that really looks like it might work in the other one, that we would contact you and make sure it's okay to share, um, but we wouldn't share your details without your permission. I don't know if anyone else has anything to add to that one. Um, there's a, there is on the, on the application form for innovation leaders, there's a, checkbox if you would like to allow us to share your um, application details with other groups um, so if if transferring to so if joining another program such as open life science or even beyond um, you can check the full list of open open leadership programs that have launched recently there are 10 in total so if, if something that you if, if that is something that you'd be interested in um, please do check that box so that we when we look at your application if we realize that it's probably a lot more suitable with to another program, we'd email you, we'd email them and we say, maybe you should talk. And I think this is the way that it will work for now. But yeah, I agree with you. Um, Cause because of this, then we, I would recommend that you choose one program, apply to it. And if, you know, if we decide that you may be a bit more suitable to the other one, we definitely make sure that your application gets reviewed by the other other programs as well. I've just added a quick link to that list of open leadership programs that Emmy mentioned, because there are other ones, uh, for example, open hardware um, and AI, for example, most of them are a bit more tech focused. I think we might be the only two science focused programs. <laughs> Um, but they are an amazing bunch of people. So if you actually know someone who might be interested in some other domain, then definitely do share these programs with someone else as well. That'd be fantastic. Uh, we could, well, I think we can guarantee they'll all be wonderful, wonderful programs. Um, okay. Final chance for questions before we wrap up.
Okay, I'm going to call it, I think. So it's been really lovely hearing everyone's questions. Um, and also there's been some uh, fantastic feedback that we've seen coming through at the end of the document. Um, if you'd still like, then feel free, you can uh, go and add any things to encourage or things that you'd like to improve. Um, and again, we won't take offense as long as it's constructive criticism and we'll be overjoyed if you have good feedback as well. <laughs> Um, but it's been really lovely hearing from you and uh, our contact details are at the top of the document for both programs. So you can still ask us further questions privately if you wish to do so. Um, but with that, I think, does anyone else have anything out that they want to say? Emmy, Movika, Bernice? Just thanks for joining the, the call. Yes, yeah, so same. Thanks for coming. This is a really a long number of people we didn't know were interested. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming um, and thanks for your interest in the program. We hope to receive a lot of your applications. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to end the recording and thank you all and bye. <laughs>